Oh, hey, Photos photographers. Glad to see you back. Anybody who's seen this video and isn't a subscriber yet, I would appreciate you subscribing, but feel free to watch the rest of this video to see if you actually get any value out of it before you subscribe. I understand that too. I don't subscribe to every channel I come across, but today we are talking about aperture value. What is aperture, number one, and what does the value have anything to do with shooting in that mode? The value of your aperture is going to be seen as you look at your camera screen in the controls and in the, the LCD panel there. It might not always be visible or understand understandable, but on a Canon, you're going to see this little value right up here. Let's see if we can get this turned into the camera lens for the video recorder there. 4.5 is what my camera is currently set at. The aperture is talking about the diaphragm in the lens and we have other videos we're talking about the diaphragm so we won't get into a lot of that today. But shooting on aperture value means that the diaphragm of your lens is the one item of the three things for exposure your camera is letting you control and it evaluates and adjusts the other two pieces so that your photograph comes out exposed properly. I don't like shooting like this, although I did shoot a lot of aperture and shutter priority while I was learning cameras digitally. Um, so the digital side was a little bit different for me and I didn't understand the way that the digital side of the camera was working as compared to film when I was shooting film. But because I didn't understand all that and shooting the aperture value and the shutter value or the time value, it gave me a better understanding of why, how, and what changed as I was changing the aperture or any other setting. So then when I got experienced enough with the aperture and the other parts of it, I began to shoot all three of those things controlling each part, the time value, the shutter, uh, the time value is the shutter value, the aperture value, and the ISO sensitivity of the shutter. The, the shutter, <laughs> shutter's not even sensitive. It's a sensor. The shutter is in front of the sensor and the sensor is what has the sensitivity in that whole scheme of those three parts to exposure. But the aperture value is allowing you the control over how wide open the camera or the, the lens diaphragm is or how closed off it is. Now we can go into a lot of the details behind this but we don't, don't really have a lot of time left for this video. The, let's just put it simply. We'll talk about the science later I hope but uh, the science is really cool that the wider open the aperture of the diaphragm in your lens is the more light can come in at various angles. And it allows, because more light is coming in from various angles, the camera then is seeing a greater range of view. But it creates a narrower, see if I can get this narrower. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to work toward the camera lens. Um, most of the time when I was on camera, except for in this YouTube channel, I didn't look at the camera. What do they call that? I wasn't professional, but um, you know, uh, anytime I would would look into the camera, they would get onto me and they would tell me something about outtakes, and they wouldn't be a usable clip. Um, something about breaking a certain panel or barrier. Anyway, <laughs> so the the depth of field closes when the aperture opens. So when the aperture is bigger and more open inside your lens that means all those the light rays that your your lens is allowing in and your sensor sees as it looks out your lens is bringing in so much more information and visual breadth or width that it it can't see very much and keep anything in focus. It has to narrow what it sees in focus and that's why you have your focusing band on your lens. So 
For instance, if you're looking 60 foot from where you are out 60 foot and there's some sort of barrier that prevents you from seeing anything past it and you have your aperture dialed down to 4.5 then the possibility of your focal depth will be something what I'm guessing to be less than one foot so that's what nine inches uh, that yeah that's close to a foot you're gonna have about that much space of things that'll be in focus now about six inches in here is where it'll be the sharpest focus but it'll start fading and it'll be nearly completely out of focus by six inches in front and six inches behind does that kind of give you an idea of the depth of field there we're talking about so and I'm just throwing out a number. I didn't actually do the calculation to know it would be 12 inches, but that kind of gives you an idea. The more closed down your lens diaphragm is, the less space will be in focus. Now, if you have that lens diaphragm opened up to 18 or 20 or 22, you're gonna have a good three, maybe four, four and a half foot, eh, kind of, sort of. Now, there is something that a lot of photographers use and this is for landscapes you you can dial in uh, an equation and we're not gonna get into this math here but if you want to use your aperture to get as much in focus as you can that's what they call an infinity focus we can talk about that also but that's kind of more of the geeky scientific side of, of photography if you're dialed in for doing landscapes that's a really cool effect but that means you have to have your aperture wide open, as nearly wide open as you can, or excuse me, <laughs> wrong direction. Has to have your, your um, lens diaphragm as narrowed down as you can, which brings it up to the higher side, the 20, 22, some lenses go up to 32. I mean, so that's, that's really shutting down your lens aperture to a, basically a pinhole, but if you want to shoot shutter priority and learn how your camera sh shuts down the shutter speed or changes your ISO, then there are some settings you need to go into and, and tell your camera some parameters so it doesn't go too slow on your shutter speed and it doesn't go too high on your ISO. Uh, it's, it's kind of detrimental to your, your shooting if what you're shooting because you want to only manage the aperture of your lens that it's not overexposing because it's a low shutter speed or putting a lot of grain into your images because it's throwing your ISO way too high. So thank you all for watching and we will get out here and do some shoots together. Um, my wife has been or my editor, excuse me, my editor has been telling me that we need to do some shoots and, and we'll do some, uh, I'll, I'll be behind this big piece of equipment here, but then my editor will be doing some uh, pan shots and, and some B-roll while I get to do the shooting. And so that way we can kind of get an idea of what we're looking for, how we frame things up and, and make sure that we have a good shot that's being produced out of camera. Now that we've gotten over a lot of the basics and um, y'all don't need to know how to turn your cameras on. I'm sure y'all already know that. Um, if any of y'all do need details like that, please let me know. I, I don't want to <laughs> leave you with a boat anchor, as they call it, a piece of useless equipment that you can't use any other way except to slow something down. But I, I also don't want to assume that... Um, I mean, let's, let's say it this way. I do assume that y'all are intelligent. So y'all bought a piece of equipment, y'all gonna know how to turn it on and that sort of stuff. But as far as using it properly, getting things set in so that you get those great photographs, it confused me. So I expect uh, y'all to be just as confused, but if y'all knew how to do everything like this, then you wouldn't be searching for a channel like this either. So. Thank y'all so much for watching. I am going to be coming back to you with some other tips and other things about what the other modes do and why. Uh, I don't want to be negative about those modes, but I don't shoot in aperture mode anymore. 
uh, once I learned because actually with the camera controlling the shutter speed and the ISO sensitivity, it really didn't help me learn aperture at all. Uh, I, I was able to notice the effects of aperture and how the, the wider open the diaphragm was, so the lower my, my f-stop number was, say, 6, 5, 4.5, how the depth of field was decreasing but that also made it very difficult for me as I was trying to figure out the lens and the zoom distance I needed it really can just cause you a lot of problems um, I, I really think that if you want to shoot aperture mode and, or shutter speed um, the, the time value mode it's almost one of those things where you need to be that much more proficient not just at controlling with manual, but you need to be that much more proficient so that you can control and, and tell your camera what to do and how not to do things. Um, and also learn what your camera is telling you your shutter speed is or your ISO sensitivity is so that when you are ready to take a picture, you know what your camera is doing in the background so that you can be the director of your, com your camera who's auto computing those other two parts and pieces. So. Thank you all so much. We will see you soon.